for this project you're going to need an image with a transparent background for the particle. I put mine in my textures folder in my code editor and after creating a basic 3JS scene I'm going to start making my particles. So the first thing I'm going to do is control when I'm making the particle explosions. So I'm making an explosions array. The explosions array will hold all the particle explosions. We're going to use a constructor so we can have multiple explosions happening at once. And I'm going to use the spacebar to control when I want a new particle explosion. So I'm using a function key pressed. So whenever a key is pressed, it's going to check if it's the spacebar key by checking if that event key property is the spacebar. So if I console log what's happening here, you see whenever a key is pressed, it's recording this event. It's a keyboard event, and the key pressed is a spacebar because there's a space between these two quotes here. If I press the N, it will show N or M or whatever. You can use whatever key you want. I like the spacebar because it's nice and big. It's easy to hit. And if it is, I'm going to make a new explosion. So I'm calling that constructor to make a new explosion. Then I'm calling the make particles function in that explosion to make the particles. And I'm pushing this particular explosion into the explosions array. And if I console log the explosions, each time I press the space bar, an explosion is added to the array. And I have to add an event listener to the window. It's going to listen to key down events. And when a key is pressed, it will run the key pressed function. So now let's build our explosion constructor. So the first part will just be the properties of each explosion. Each explosion, the particles will be in a new three group. The explosion property will track when an explosion starts and when an explosion stops. So the particles aren't made yet for this explosion, so it's set to false. The particle texture will be the image that I have in my textures folder. The number of particles will range from 100 to 300. The speed will be 0.01. That's used to calculate the velocity of the particles in the explosion. And I'm setting this blank color, and it will be changed once we make the particles. Okay, so let's start making our particles. So I'm using this make particles function inside this constructor. So if you want the particles to be the same color in the explosion, you can set the color outside of this for loop. So I'm just picking a random hue, and each particle will have the same saturation and lightness. But if you want the particles to have different colors in the explosion, you set the color inside this loop, and you could just comment this out. Okay, so now I'm making a loop for the number of particles, and I'm going through each one. So I'm setting the particle material as a sprite material with the particle texture of that image, and I'm setting the depth test to false, and I'm creating a new sprite using that particle material, and I'm setting the material blending to additive blending. So this is going to add the colors of the images together if they overlap. And you can get some interesting effects when you do that. Now I'm going to set the velocity of each particle. So I'm storing the velocity of each particle in the user data object. It's going to be a new vector 3. And I'm just picking a random number and multiplying it by this dot speed, which is 0.01, and minus half of that on the x, y, and z axis. And then I'm going to take that vector, the velocity vector here, I'm going to multiply it by a number from 2 to 5. And you can play with these numbers to make them faster or slower. And that will be the velocity vector in this user data object on the particle. Now I'm setting the particle color. So if your particle color is set outside of the loop, like this, then you can just set the particle color to this dot color. But if you want different colored particles in your explosion, you can comment this out go back to this color and comment this out and set a random color to each particle. So I'm just picking a random hue and each particle will have the same saturation and lightness. Because this dot color is this color that we created in the explosion properties. And I'm setting the particle opacity and I'm setting the particle size. So that's going to be the scale of the particle. Then I'm adding that particle to this particle group. This particle group has all the particles for this particular explosion. Then I'm going to set the position of this particular explosion to a random x position, y position, and z position. And I'm adding it to the scene. 
And lastly, I'm setting the explosion property of this explosion to true. Now that the particles are made for this explosion, now I will have to animate it. So whenever the explosion property is true, I need to animate it and we're going to use a function to do that. So let's work on our update function inside our explosion constructor. The update function will perform four tasks. It's going to add the velocity to the position of each particle. It's going to change the opacity of each particle, so it's going to slowly fade the particles out. It's going to go through each particle in the explosion and see if the opacity is reached zero. If it is, we're going to remove that particular particle from the particle group. And then it's going to go through each explosion and see if the explosion property is set to false. If the explosion property is set to false, that means that explosion is done and we need to remove that explosion from the explosions array. In this update function, an explosion is called a particle group and inside the particle group are the particles and we call them children. So it will be called this particle group dot children. And if we console log this particle group dot children, you see it lists all the particles inside that particle group. Okay, so to go through each particle in the explosion, we're going to use the for each method. The for each method goes through each element of an array, and it's way quicker than a for loop. So I'm just taking this array of objects, the particle group children, and for each one, I'm calling it a child. So for each child, or for each element in that array, I'm just adding the velocity vector to the position vector. And then I'm taking the opacity property of that particle, and I'm subtracting 0.008. Now I need to go through each of these particles and see if the opacity is below zero. So I'm going to use the filter method. So I'm taking this particle group children or this group of particles and I'm filtering each particle and it's only going to put the particles with an opacity above zero into this particle group. So if, if one of these particles has an opacity equal to zero or less than zero, it will not be included inside this particle group anymore. So the filter method is a really quick way to go through an array of elements and see which ones match a certain criteria. And then I'm saying if this particle group length is zero. So if there's no particles left in this particle group, then I'm setting the explosion property to false, right? Because if there's still particles in the group, that means they can be seen. So the explosion is still going on. They need to be animated. But once this explosion property is set to false, we can remove this particular explosion. So then I'm going to use the filter method for the explosions array. And we're going to filter each explosion so EXP is just one particular explosion. And when I say explosion, this means explosion is equal to true. So if the explosion is equal to true, we're putting it back into the array. If the explosion property is equal to false, then it is filtered out of that array. Okay, so we still need to call this update function. So let's look at our animate loop. So our animate loop, I have if the explosion's array length is bigger than zero. That means there's an explosion in that array. So I'm using the for each method. So for every explosion in the explosions array, we're calling the update function. 